really weird not using a script because before all my videos were scripted. Now none of my videos are scripted. And the fact is nobody noticed, so I guess I must be getting better. Hi internet, Ark speaking. Welcome back to the channel. In case if you do not recognize this face, that's okay. I'm Ark, same guy who's been running this all this time. And today I want to talk a little bit about the technical jargon that we use in the Mario Kart Wii community. Now the definition of jargon is words or expressions that are used to more accurately and precisely and quickly uh, describe a particular situation in a particular field. So for instance, technical jargon, medical jargon. However, the downside of jargons is they tend to exclude a lot of people because unless you're part of the group already, it's hard to understand, it's hard to learn, and it's, well, for the lack of a better term, jargon is made specifically to be confusing to those of you who are not in the group. So today I want to break down a little bit of the basic beginner jargon and terminology that we use for Mario Kart Wii so that some of you beginners could learn a little bit more about the technicality. First up, course names. Now inside of Mario Kart Wii, every course can be abbreviated down to either one, two, or it may at the most three syllable phrases or words. The way we do most of this is by taking the first letter of each word and then putting them together. So Luigi Circuit would be LC. Moomoo Meadows would be MMM or Triple M as I like to say it. So on and so forth. Mushroom Gorge, MG. Toad's Factor, TF. It may sound like we're just trying to shorten something that does not need to be shortened. However, it is important when you're inside of a war call or a competitive environment that you're able to shorten these abbreviations down so you don't clutter the call. Now for most of these terminologies, you could take the first abbreviations and kind of figure it out yourself. Like what's KC? K would be, there's only a few courses that start with K. Koopa Cape. GB2. That one will be a little bit harder. That's Ghost Valley 2. Now for some of the more complicated ones, you might see a lowercase r added before it or a console name before or after the abbreviation. So for instance, Mario Kart Wii has three Bowser's Castle, those being Bowser's Castle Wii, abbreviated as BC Wii, RBC, or BC64, which is Bowser's Castle that comes from the N64, or BC3. Here's a few more examples. DSDS is short for DS, which is the console that it came on, and DS, Delfino Square. Another example, RMC, which is short for Retro Mario Circuit, which is the GCN Mario Circuit. Also, I don't know why, but some people spell Moonview Highway with a lowercase v in between the H and the M, the M and the H. I don't know why. I spell it M-H. Some people spell M-V-H. It's Moonview Highway. Also, before we go any further, I should probably say some people in the Mario Kart Week community will have a different terminology list than me. But the idea stays the same that we're trying to shorten down the word of the track into something that's a little bit more digestible and does not clog a call. All right, the next category that we'll be going over is the items. Now there's not too many items that have an abbreviation, so let's just go through all of them. First up, let's go with a mushroom. Now inside of a call, we don't say the mush part, we just say shrooms. Again, this is a way to quickly identify what your teammate has in a call. So if you say I have triple shrooms, that's much, much faster and cleaner than saying I have triple mushrooms. For all three types of shells, they're identified by the color. So greens, reds, and blues. Bananas are shortened down to nanos, bombs, fibs, fibs is short for a fake item box, fib. Golden instead of golden mushroom, shock instead of lightning bolt, and TC, which is short for thundercloud. All the other items have a pretty short name like mega, blooper, star, they don't need to be abbreviated as much. Like I said earlier, jargon may sound like it's just trying to be complicated for the sake of being complicated, but there's actual practical reasons why we have to shorten these things down. I'll get to that in the next category. Speaking of which, location names and strat names. Now those two, I clumped them together, but they're actually two separate things. Strat names are things like double back, wide, tight, and block. These are callouts to show you how the item is placed on a particular tone. However, to distinguish what kind of tone or which tone it is, there's location names. Things like first tone, last tone, first ramp, last ramp, generic things like that, as well as shortcuts. You could use things like gap, double, things to identify which or where the location of the item is. However, there is a lot of location names and every team has different callouts for different spots on the map. If you've ever played CSGO or Valorant, you'll be familiar with callout spots for identifying where your opponents are. Words like jungle or hookah may be part of your vocabulary. It's similar to that with Mario Kart Wii. However, instead of identifying where your opponents are, you're identifying where items are either being placed or already located. I'm going to quickly run down some of the most common callouts on all of the maps inside of Mario Kart Wii. However, I am guaranteed to miss some because every clan, I think I already said this, every clan has different callouts that they use for different maps. So keep that in mind before you type in the comments down below. All right, first up, inside of Mushroom Gorge, there's the cave. Cave is a pretty common callout. 
inside of pretty much every track that has a sharp tone area that has some kind of roofing over it. Toad's Factory has the red room and conveyors. Hopefully, Editor Arc will have a picture of it to show what I'm talking about. On Coconut Mall, there's the Down Spiral, the Up Spiral, and then Greenhouse. These are all very common callouts that are unique and indigenous to Coconut Mall. DK Summit has something called After Cannon, which is common, as you probably could have guessed, with all the cannon tracks, as well as the fact it has Zippo, which is the first turn after the cannon, and it has the double itself. Warrior's Gold Mine has something called Down, Up, and the Minecart, or as some teams call it, Shortcut. Pictures, pictures, pictures. Daisy Circuit, just like Mushroom Gorge, has the cut and a cave. Now, even though it's technically not a cave, people still use that terminology. Koopa Cape has the waterfall section where you go from the pipe down into the underwater section. That's a very common trap spot. It's very easy to get someone there. Oh wait, no, no, no. Uh, Koopa Cape also has shell and arch. Those are both also very common callouts. Maple Treeway. I can't think of anything on Maple Treeway. For a course like Maple Treeway, if someone calls like Nano Tight or Nano Wide, you would just have to assume by looking at where they are on the minimap to identify which turn they're talking about. So that's how most teams do it if you do not have a specific call out for it, of course. DDR has the sand top as well as the wall glitch. You can trap the wall glitch as well as the fact you could trap the last turn, which is also a common call out. Moonview Highway has Blind Turn and Hairpin. Hairpin is also a pretty common term. You'll see that on a few other tracks. And for the Blind Turn, the Blind Turn is the turn before the last turn. So they're both Blind Turns, but the first one is called the Blind Turn. Rainbow Road has a lot of blind boost panels. So if someone calls boost panel Nano, then you're going to have to find out, again, by watching on the minimap, who's calling it and where they are. GS Delfino Square has the double, obviously, as well as the dock. The dock is also a very common block spot. Bowser's Castle 3, just like any other shortcut, has something called a block. You could block a shortcut, especially a shortcut like Bowser's Castle 3, and as well as the fact you could also unblock it. So blocking and unblocking is a big thing on Bowser's Castle 3. Peach Gardens. Ooh, Peach Gardens is an interesting one. There is a spot called Troy Spot, and the reason why it's called Troy Spot is because Troy, TWD98, he made a video a long time ago about cool hidden trapping spots that you could do. And there's a spot on the corner, I think it's the second tone? There's a spot on the corner where you could place a nano and it's pretty much invisible. And it's a very good trap spot and that was later deemed called the choice spot. RBC is really where first turn, second turn, all those kind of callouts come into play. However, if you want some unique ones, there is After Thwomp, Bridge, which is also a common callout, and Superman. They call it Superman because you kind of jump off if you do it properly. Oh yeah, voiceover arc here. I forgot about Spiral and Rail. Spiral is actually a common callout. It's just anything that has to go in a spiral, and rail is just at the end of the road. So that's a list of some of the most common location names inside of Mario Kart Wii. If you're interested in getting into competitive wars, or at least just want to know what people are talking about, hopefully that helps someone. All right, the last category are teaching names or educational names. These be things like delay drifting, double hop drifting, spin drifting. These are specifically for teaching people how to learn the game by using terminology to describe a particular action. Interesting story, things like ski drifting, for example, I did not know what it was called. There was the technique where the bike skids across the ground without getting a mini turbo. And the reason why I came up with the term ski drifting is because I could not find an actual name for it. Now I know, I think it's called a weight drift, but more people know it as a ski drift instead of a weight drift because I popularized it, so that, that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, the last thing I want to talk about is the terminology jargon. One of the definitions that is mostly associated with jargon is being confusing to people who are not inside of the group. And I understand that there is some realistic need why it has to be like that so that you could be more precise. It's a special vocabulary. However, I also want to help new players understand some of this jargon that we use not to feel alienated. Because if you play Mario Kart Wii, it's actually a very practical thing to know. We're not trying to scare people away by using fancy terminology. So don't be afraid to ask questions if you do not know what something is called. Not everyone in the Mario Kart Wii community is really that nice. I'm sorry to report, but at least I try to make my Discord server a safe place for beginners to want to learn, grow and improve and ask questions without feeling ridiculed. So Discord, link down in the video description. Also, for those of you guys who are wondering why I decided to do face cam, why I'm doing a lot of face cam uh, videos, um, it's actually a few reasons. One, my editor broke and the new editor that I'm using does not have a voiceover feature. So it's actually easier for me to just record a batch file into OBS and just import it. And second off, I decided it's time to learn how to talk in front of a camera. It's something that I've always struggled with, expressing my ideas in front of a lens. If you're interested in more of this, uh, be sure to check out my Twitch streams live every Thursday, Tuesday, I don't know why I said it backward, and Saturdays. If you guys are interested in watching some more Mario Kart Wii footage and just hanging out with the Mario Kart Wii professor, be sure to follow me down there. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Don't forget to do the YouTube stuff, like commenting and subscribing, and I'll see you around.